Okay, I, I think we can get going here. So this is going to be a presentation of our latest release of Smart Build uh, 1.65. So we have some new features and new functionality, and I'm going to go over what they are and how to get them set up and just how they work. And initially, you know, I kind of do my spiel with that, and then we'll open it up, and you guys can ask any questions you want. As I'm going through it initially, we just ask that you stay on mute and just kind of let me get through it and save up any questions uh, for the end, and then we'll just open it up. You can also use the chat feature. So at any point, you can really send in a chat, um, and then we'll either answer it right away. Paul and Suzanne will kind of be keeping an eye on that as I go through it. And then we'll either address it right away or we'll address it at the end. Uh, so Keith is actually out today. Usually he'll kind of uh, give a talk, but he is on an airplane today, so he's not going to be joining us. Um, but yeah, we'll just kind of save up those questions for the end, and I'll go through here and demonstrate these latest features. And I'm going to share my screen at this point. And if someone could just verify for me that they have my screen out there. Not yet. Not yet? Hmm. Not yet. Oh, yeah, let me click this button here. That'll probably help. How about now? Uh, not yet. Oh, here we go. We're good. Okay, cool. All right. So here we are on my system, and there are several things that need to be done in the settings in order to take advantage of some new features here. So the first thing I'm going to do I'm just going to go into the framing rules and set up a couple things. And then we're, once I set these up, we'll go into a job and see how these actually function once you get into a job. But in order to have these kind of things available, once you get into a job, you do have to come into the settings and make some changes. And so the first thing that we're going to look at are some Perlin changes. And so I'm going to scroll down here to my Perlin framing. And so we have a couple new things down here at the bottom. One is this Perlin start. And that is going to be where the Perlins are pulled from in terms of the spacing. And we traditionally came down from the peak. Uh, and then would center, you know, that first Perlin from the top of the peak based off of your Perl and spacing that you have set. So the way it's going to come in for you right now, it's, it's, you know, traditionally we try not to change anything on you when we do these releases. So the way that it's been traditionally is this coming down from the peak. Um, if you like that, you're not going to have to do anything. The other option we have now is just pulling it from the eave. So pulling up, you know, from the bottom up as opposed to the top down. So if you do prefer that, you need to come in here and switch this over to Eve. You can also change this in the job, but if this is what you always want to use, then you can come in here, change it to Eve, and it's always going to pull these from the Eve. The other thing that we've added here is you can set the distance for that you know, top like ridge purlin distance. Uh, so if you want this to be something else, you could do this in a job, but you can also come in here to the framing rules, and this will just kind of set it up as a default. So if you want this to be something else, you can come in here and make that change. We've also added this Eve board, and we put it under the Perlin framing, and really that's going to be that very first Perlin at the Eve. You can now have a different material from the rest of your Perlin. So now I have two by four for my Perlins. Um, when you have this set to none, it's going to operate the way that it does now, and that is just that first Eve board Perlin is going to match whatever your Perlin material is. 
But if you want something different, you know, if you want the ability to change that first one, you are going to have to come in here, uh, hit this little E button, and then pull things out of your framing inventory. So, you know, maybe I want a pressure treated two by six. I guess I don't have a two by four pressure treated in here, but um, I'll just add that pressure treated two by six. And now that is available here as an option. I'm going to leave this as none. And but once we go into a job, I'll be able to change that over to a pressure treated two by six if I want. Um, so we'll talk a little more about that when we get into a job. We can kind of demonstrate what those are doing. The other things in here that you may want to change are related to a new header style that we've added. And I have done some of this already, but there is a new header style available. It's called In Out Gert. And I'll it basically I'll demonstrate how that works, but there is a new interior header material which refers to the material that gets placed on the inside of the building. So, you know, this is kind of like a trough header, but it'll run across to, you know, across the post. And then you could have a two by six on the outside of the building and a two by ten on the inside. And we'll take a look at that. But there, you know, traditionally it just used the same, you, you'd have the same material on the inside and the outside of the building at those posts for this header. And it's very similar to the trough header, but in this case, there is a new interior header material that you can change up just that interior header to something different. And I came in here already and added in some two by tens and two by twelve. So same kind of thing I did with the Perlins. You can go into your inventory. And if you want to be able to change this interior header, you do need to add some different materials in here that make sense or what you use in here. And this is available for post frame and stud frame. And we'll, we'll take a look at that, but if you want to use that for any of your openings, you will have to come in here and uh, add in some materials there that you can use for that interior header. And you might have noticed one match outside is an option. That's going to be the default that comes in. It's going to operate the way it did in the past where, you know, whatever you have for your header material, it's going to be inside and the outside are going to be the same. It's going to kind of just base that off of the outside is what this means. So the default's going to be match outside. It's not going to be any different than it has been in the past. But if you do want to use this, you'll need to come in here and add some different materials. Um, and you could set a different default here. If you do want a default, I'm going to leave mine a match outside. And then once we get into a job, you'll see we can change that. Um, I think that's everything that I want to do in here in the framing rule. So I'm going to make sure to hit save up here to apply those. Um, the other thing that I wanted to do in the settings here before we jump into the job is to look at some new stuff in the packages. So I'm going to go into the packages and I set up just kind of an example already here. So the other new thing that we have in the software of this release are new stud frame related calc bases and tokens. So before we just had total number of studs. Now we've broken these out so that you can get different counts of different types of uh, studs. So I went into packages. I created a new package here and I just called it stud counts. And it's really just an example. But um, and so I went into my catalog and you can add things from your catalog. And, you know, I guess I don't want to go too deeply into how these packages work. I know a lot of you know exactly how these work and work with these a lot. There's probably some people out there who really haven't seen these, but we use these packages to calculate materials and get them into a job. And we can use any information from a given job. So we can do things like, um, you know, I, I set up one here that was number of king studs plus the number of trimmers. 
and I just have some labor that comes in based on that. I'm, you know, maybe those get built beforehand. And so for any given job, for the number of king studs plus trimmers, um, whatever that count turns out to be based on this calculation, I'm going to end up with, you know, a certain number of the, this labor. I have $100. This is just kind of a silly example, but you can use these calculations, anything you can do in Excel outside of, you know, referring to other cells. You can set up these calculations and you can calculate things and just have the program automatically pull anything you want out of your inventory based on the specifics of that job. And so we have these new ones at King Studs, Trimmers. And the way I added those is through this button here. And just so, just to demonstrate here, I you can put in a search text and it'll reduce the list here. So I came in here, so I came in here. These are what these actually look like. This is how I got these to come in. You just click on these um, and then you can set up a calculation with these. And so here's the new ones, number of studs, full studs, cripple studs, the end studs and the king studs. So you can get separate counts of these. You can use these, you know, however you want to be able to calculate things. One thing I noticed here that I guess I'll point out that we just didn't get a chance to clean up. The trimmers, we actually didn't call them trimmer studs, so they don't come up on this list. But if I just type in trimmer, it'll come up with number of trimmers. So we'll change that. So it's kind of nice just to type in stud and you can get all the different ones. But so I, I just set up a count of these. We'll go into a job and you'll see I'll turn this package on. I set this up to be. Uh, something that we can turn off and on. You can have these just come in automatically. There's some different options here, but anyway, he, these are the new broken out studs that you can use for your calculations. Um, these will also come through on documents or in document templates. So if you want to output these in the format of a document, you can get these kind of counts as well and list those out. Uh, no reason to hit save here. I'm just going to hit cancel here. Okay, so now we're back at my home page here. And I did start on a job. So I'm going to just hit edit here. And we'll go into this job and we'll look at these, uh, how these things get applied in this job. And we'll also look at some other stuff in here. So this is loading up this job that I have, it's loading up all the settings associated with that and all the materials and the pricing and the outputs, the drawings. And so as it loads up here, we will see the building that I created. So 30 by 40 building. Um, there is the total price here. We do have the material list and drawings and the outputs for this building at this point. Um, and the first thing that I'll do here is I'm just going to jump into these purlins that we looked at. So I'll switch over to the frame view. And if we go into the advanced settings, we'll, we'll see these same purlin framing settings that we were just looking at there in the settings. They get reflected here in the job. So, you know, here's these three that we just talked about available here in this job itself. And yeah, I'd save some of these settings. So this doesn't necessarily reflect what I just changed in my framing rules, but um, you know, here's where you can change right now. I'm running this so that this first Perlin is coming from the top or yeah, the center of that ridge and coming down to the center of this Perlin. But if I switch this over to Eve, it's just going to pull that from the bottom. So if I switch that, we'll see like spacing is going to adjust from the bottom. And here's that offset. I did change that in my framing rules to three inches, but because I already saved this job previously, it didn't, any new job would have reflected my changes. But you know, if I change, that offset, it's going to put this pearl in three inches from the center of that ridge. So a little bit closer there. And then here's where 
we have this option for the Eve board. If I go into my job review and we look at the framing, uh, for the purlins right now, they're all coming in as this two by four material for my inventory. If I switch this over to pressure treated, all those purlins that are at the eave wall there are going to be this pressure treated member now. So you can have two different materials here. If we do go back to uh, the model here, we'll see that now we do have a two by six there. So now we have a two by six member and then two by fours here. If you don't want to use this, you don't really have to worry about it. It's going to come in as none. Um, I guess the thing that I didn't mention there in the framing rules, these will come in hidden depending. We do have some um, user settings where, you know, you can have some people who might see every all these questions, and then you can hide questions so they just don't show up here and they'll just use defaults, or if you just don't want people changing these things, you can hide them. You might have to unhide these as well so that they actually show up here in the job. Um, if you don't want to use this, if you don't want a different EVE board, you can just leave this at none. You can keep it hidden. It's always just going to match your uh, Perlin spacing or your Perlin material up here. And so I could adjust the Perlin spacing and all these kind of things that we've had in the past, but uh, so, yeah, those, that's the new Perlin stuff. Um, we'll be doing some more work on the Perlins, but this is this is what we've done here. So, uh, always looking for feedback on how the Perlins are working for you. You know, let us know if you have any feedback on that. Um, so, the next thing here is this uh, new header style that we have. And I, I'll demonstrate this on this overhead door I have here. And this is a post frame. So to do this, I'm just jump over to the door and window. And this is going to look very similar to what we saw in the framing rules. But um, so this is available on post or stud frame. In this case, I have a post frame wall here. So I'll drop this down. Right now, I have this trough header style that is I have it just coming right to the edge of the post, the inside edge of the post. Um, if I switch over my header style to this new in out girt, we call it, and hit my refresh down here, then we'll see that it's just going to push these over to the edge of the post. Um, I have my header material is two by four. If I switch this over to like a two by six and I have this match outside, it's just gonna keep these both as two by six and switch those up. But if I wanna use this new interior header material, then I can come over here and because I added these in my framing rules now, they're available in here and I can hit the refresh and it's going to turn this inside material to the two by 10 that I just set there. Um, and then just like in the past with the trough, like I have the header soffit is this piece lying down here. And so I probably want to change this over to the two by six to fill this in properly. So now that changed that. So now I have this in out heard header style used. And this is available for stud frame. You'll notice I have a wall here in the center of the building. And maybe make it a little bit easier to see. I'll, I'll just I'll open up this wall. So now I opened up that wall. And you can see that I do have a similar thing going on here. You can use this for any sort of stud wall. This one just happens to be interior, but um, so underneath my walk door stud framing, I'm using the in-out girt, and I have two different materials here. I don't know if that would really make sense, but um, you can use these for stud frame as well. So if I throw the shell back on here, um, you can see I do have some liner here, so might make sense to use that for this particular door on the interior. 
Um, okay. I think that is really those framing rule related things. The other piece that we've added into the software that I wanted to demonstrate are this, these abilities to add cantilever porches and divider walls. And I guess I'll just start with a bit of a warning that you know, we're kind of holding on to this and working on this and it just was taking a long time. And we decided we wanted to get it out there and let you guys play around with this and use it. It does have some cleanup and some issues that we're going to have to address. So we're keeping a list of these things and we will be fixing these relatively soon. And so if you do have feedback, if you see issues, please just you know throw us an email to support. Just take a picture of it or something and uh, send it into us and we will get these things cleaned up. But I wanted to demonstrate a little bit about how these work. So the first thing I'm going to do, I guess, is the divider wall. So up here across the top, we have this new camp porch button and a divider wall button. And this is actually how I got this wall here set up. I use this divider wall feature where you just click on this. It'll pull up a little dialogue and it does remove the roof just so you can see. And you'll see here that it will offset an exterior wall. And when I hover over one, it letting me know according to these settings where it's going to put this. And it's not going to let me offset this one. So I get this red. But in this case, like if I wanted to offset this wall, Right now, if you if you set it to zero zero, it's just going to keep it full length. So you can see that that's full. See that that's full length. You can change the length of these and the start of where these would start. This offset eight foot is going to be, you know, this wall is offset eight foot from, or the wall that will be placed is offset eight foot from this front wall. So you can change these up. Um, and I guess you know I'll just click on this and place this particular offset wall. And so you can see that it did offset that. And because with this offset, it's not going to keep that door framing, which is fine. Um, and you'll notice it is a post frame wall. It kept the same properties. I did go into this wall here because I did the same thing with this wall. I went into the advanced edit and you so you can go into advanced edit so now this is the stud frame wall this is the one I just put in but so I went into this interior one wall and changed the framing from stud frame or from post frame over to uh, stud frame so I came over to the advanced tab and went to the wall framing and change this over to stud frame. And I also changed up this material here for the wall panels. And so you can come into these individual walls and you can make changes to them once you get them in. Um, so if I go back here to the main view, once you know you get these in here, just like with attached buildings and with porches, you can hit this edit and come in here and also you know change the length of these and do some different things and if i double click on this then i can delete this i'll just delete this wall so that's you know basically how those are working at this point um the cantilever porch, similar process here. Um, and in this case, like if I, I want, you can do, a, you know, an inset port here. You can see that it's going to start eight foot from the left. It's going to run across eight foot and then it's going to offset this portion eight foot. So put in a wall here and a wall here and a wall back here. Um, I can also, you know, I could do a full length on this side 
So I could say zero and I could say 40 and it's gonna offset this wall in eight foot. And you do have some options here related to this front wall where basically if fully open means it's not going to keep any framing or any post. It's just going to offset this wall completely. And this is going to be a cantilever situation. There's going to be no posts along here. It's just going to be totally open. The other option here is open sheathing. And really that means it's going to remove the sheathing. And I really, what that ends up being is it's just going to keep the post. So I think I'll do that in this case. And I am just gonna click right here and we'll see what we get here. So now it did offset that. So now we have this kind of cantilever look here and I do keep the posts on the corners. This uh, fully open is gonna remove these posts as well. And you can see that we do have a wall sticking out here. Probably don't want that. Uh, I can click on this and in this case since that's an eight foot i can change the length of this and if i just change that length and hit apply we should see this wall shorten up but there's still this one on the inside here but i got rid of it here um so you know you can do things like that this you know, we could have had this just run 20 foot to here and this could still be enclosed or like i said you could do kind of an inset porch right in the middle um and like i said there are some issues we do have cleanup here associated you know with the steel getting cut and doing some different things being able to you know maybe just have a ceiling on this portion and maybe this doesn't have a ceiling here. Uh, you know, treating this as its own kind of, we're talking about rooms. So, you know, the one thing we do want to do is continue with these kind of interior walls and being able to do this. So this is a good step. This, you know, we're not finished with this by any means. There is cleanup and there's some issues here. Um, we do want to have like being able to do something different with this room like maybe you don't want a slab here but maybe you do want a slab over here or vice versa right now this is kind of just one building so we're getting this slab um, on the entire room when i hover here that highlight is really highlighting this porch so if you do want to edit these things that's how if i double click here this is how i get back into this and we could make some changes if we wanted or delete it um so yeah, this is just one step here in our interiors. Interiors, we're going to uh, continue with this, and you know, be able to just put in individual rooms. But for now, this you know, there's a lot that you can kind of play around with here. There's a lot that you can do with this, and like I said, it does need some cleanup. You know, be mindful of when you're using this just make sure you're looking at how things get framed you know this may not be exactly what you want you know for example i do have this these panels are running all the way up but on this side they're only running up to here and that's because this is still kind of thinking of it as an exterior but this is looking at it as an interior stud frame wall so so these are the kind of things that we'll clean up and we'll be working on. So you just, you know, I guess, just be careful and take make sure you uh, take a look at your material list and stuff as you're working with this. But we wanted to get it out there and we will just continue to work and improve on this. Um, you know, really, I think that's everything that I wanted to show for this particular release. So at this point, um, you know, if Mark or Paul or anybody else with Smart Build has anything they want to add, feel free to jump in. Uh, also, at this point, I guess we can just open it up to questions about this. We could talk more about 
these cantilever porches, divider walls and interior walls and stuff if you want, or, you know, anything else that you guys want to talk about. We have, you know, 25 minutes here where we can just kind of open it up. Yeah, Sean, it might be worth um, demonstrating what happens if you do things like um, offset or put a camp porch on this wall with a, with an opening in it, or even put a walk door in your uh, in your little porch there and and remove that. Okay, so let's see. Maybe I will get rid of this. And we'll put a door in this wall. So maybe I'll just throw a walk door in here somewhere. Hit refresh. So now we have an opening here. And I can come in and use this camp feature. I'll pretty much just do the same thing here and say zero and 40 and let's see i'll leave the posts in there and then i'll click on this again and we'll see what happens with this opening here so it kept that opening in there and just kind of offset that whole thing so you can put openings in these walls that are offset that was one of those things that you know, we wanted to make sure it worked properly before we put this out. So there's definitely um, a lot of work that went into that, but that's that's pretty cool. It'll keep your openings if you offset it. Um, and then I guess if we do come back in here, if I go back, let's see, close this up and do the edit. And if we edit this and delete it, it should keep... that opening in there and let's see what happens here so yep so there it is kept that um and if you do like an inset porch you can put doors and windows and things on the newly created inset walls as well similar to this it, you know when you do that it's yeah and if you delete those, it's not going to keep those openings. It'll get rid of the openings and like the side walls. Uh, is that what you're thinking, Mark? What else? What else do you think? Yeah, Mark? go ahead and put go ahead and put a, a camp porch on that wall. We have it start at five and run for ten. All right, camp porch start at five, run ten. Long. Sure. Eight foot offset is fine. Okay, so we're putting it right, right there. Yeah. Oh, cool. So now go ahead and put a, a window on each side of that. It's gonna fit. Yeah, Okay, cool. Now we got some windows in there. And now if you go ahead and delete that opening. Delete this opening? Actually, actually select that or no, select the go to edit and select the camp porch. Uh, click on it. Uh, I think we ran into that problem. <laughs> yeah, we got to get that. We may have to. We may have to hot patch that fix once we get it completely implemented. Yeah, I guess it does point out. There's kind of a weird thing where you can get in this mode, and this can happen also with the porches, where the dialog does not want to come up. So now this is not coming up. Do you? Yeah. So this is a bug that we're actually working the fix right now. Yeah. So yeah. Unfortunately, the only thing to do, uh -huh. the only thing to do at this point is to save it and re-enter the job. 
Okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so we had a couple of questions come in on the chat. The first was when we put in that divider wall, can we put into your liner on both sides? And the answer, of course, is well, yes. But right now, what happens is you get exterior liner on the side closest to the wall that you offset to create it that's the exterior of that wall and you'll get into your liner if you have interior liner turned up but as Sean did on this job you can go into advanced edit and change that liner for that wall the sheeting for that wall to be the same material as your interior liner not not necessarily ideal <laughs> um, so this is what uh, this is what we're getting now um, if you, uh, the other question then was putting ceiling liner on the porch only. <clears throat> and that is something that we want to work on. Um, uh, and we think that the best way to address that is this idea of, of a room. <clears throat> Where when you look at this building, you have, you have this, this porch defines a room and then you can have control over what goes on in that room does it have a slab does it have floor framing does it have ceiling does it have um does it have wainscot um, you would have settings that you could override for that particular room similarly when you use these divider walls to divide up the interior of the structure that would define rooms as well as would attached buildings and so the idea that you would have some control over what goes on on the inside of an area uh, through this, this concept of a room, um, the only wrinkle is that a, a porch, a camp porch like this is it's kind of an exterior room, right? <laughs> so we're still, still trying to, uh, to figure out how to do that. But we think that you do have full control for most of these things um, through the advanced edit, uh, other than the ceiling liner, as, as was mentioned. Um, but those are things that if you want a different ceiling liner in this, in this one attached building, you have to go in and select each wall individually and, and override all of them. <clears throat> Where we think that by giving you the concept of a room as something that you can set parameters for, you would be able to look at a, a room view of the building and then select each room and set parameters for that room, similar to what we have for advanced edits for a panel. So that's the direction that we're headed for for treating the ceiling on a, on a porch, as well as um, the ceiling on attached buildings, um, the ceilings. Uh, that would also address an issue that we have where if you have two walls that get combined, then you can't use advanced edit to change one part of that wall and not the other part of that wall. <clears throat> Whereby, by using the walls as dividers for those, you could still have a continuous wall, but in on the inside of that wall, there there's two two separate rooms there that you have control over. So we think going that way is going to give people a lot more, uh, a lot a lot easier and intuitive to use, and still give them the kind of control and, and uh, granularity that they need over the model. Yeah. Hey, Sean, there's also something that probably should be shown is the difference between fully open and uh, open sheeting on that front wall. Some people want to keep the posts out front. Did you show that? <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, you showed that in the first in the first example. Uh, change the change the start from zero 
or to zero and the length to 40. So right now it's fully open. And it's going to get rid of our windows, right? But keep that door. Yep. Correct. <clears throat> so here's where we definitely have a little bit of work to do. We're missing some subfascia. But this is fully, fully open, no post. If we switch it over to open sheathing, then we'll end up with some posts based off of, I kind of have some weird post spacing here, but now we have the post. Yeah, um, and maybe we, we could demonstrate, if you go into advanced edit, uh, for this interior one, just kind of back to that question about interior liner for the panels anyway. Here's that interior wall and underneath the advanced, I went into the wall sheathing and actually i just changed the color but we could change you know the panel for this the panel material right now this is matching my exterior i guess i just went in here and changed the color of this to match my interior color so i changed the wall color to white so like mark was saying because i offset this uh, this side of the wall is using exterior settings and then if we flip it over this is actually using the interior panel liner so let's see if I this is white but I could come in and change this one to red I believe it's going to change this wall yeah so now this side over here and this is just showing through from the other side but so now if we go back to this 3D view, then we can see that so this side over here, I offset this exterior wall. And so it's treating this one like the outside, but I went in and changed the color of just that one wall. We could have also changed the panel material. It's treating this like the exterior. So it's using the exterior settings. So it's kind of, it's confusing right now, but once you go into advanced edit for this side of this wall, you'll need to change up the exterior wall material. But this one is being treated like the interior panels and I just changed the interior color to this one wall here. So like Mark said, with this rooms concept, this will be something that will be a lot easier and more intuitive. But now if you do want to mess around with these, you just have to keep in mind the wall that was offset, it's facing this wall that I offset is going to be exterior settings. And then this side is going to be using interior settings. <clears throat> All right, anything else? So one of the questions then was, is there a quick way to make all interior walls stud frame without wall girts or metal for a post frame house? Or do you need to do each wall individually in advance that? Right now you need to do each wall individually. Um, one of the big questions is when you put in um, a divider wall, should that divider wall be the same as your as the wall that you're offsetting, which is currently what we're doing? 
or should you have some more control over that divider wall when you're initially defined? Right now, we just take whatever whatever wall you click on and we offset it in the AFAR. Um, but uh, and and primarily, what we were the first thing that we were trying to address with these divider walls was the, the technique that people have adopted, which is to put in a, a 30 by 20 building and then add another identical 30 by 20 building in order to get a 30 by 40 building with a divider wall down the middle. So by by adding this capability, you no longer have to add, um, add attached buildings to get um, sort of bays within a building. And in that scenario, it seemed that people were, were doing those interior divider walls as post frame walls. Uh, but that's part of what we want to get some feedback from people is, is what are the kinds of use cases that you need to be able to do? And what's the best way that we can structure this interface so that it's easy and intuitive for you to get what you want without having to think too hard about it? Yeah. And again, the, the reason that big red text is there is that we know that there are problems with this. Um, <clears throat> we would we do not recommend that anyone use this on a building for a customer without being prepared to do a lot of uh, review, intense review and tweaking of the material list that gets generated and the outputs that get generated. Um, there are lots of problems with these. The interior, the height of the interior wall goes all the way up to the, the bottom of the roof. Probably should stop at the bottom of the truss. Um, the uh, yeah, but in this case, yeah, it where where the ceiling runs to. Yeah, yeah. Um, all of these things. Where does the, the particularly on the um, on the cant porch, the the side walls, the framing on those is we know is off. It's putting truss carriers on those side walls. It shouldn't be. So there's a lot of issues with how these things go together. But we wanted to get this out uh, into your hands so that you could start playing around with it and giving us some feedback of the kinds of things that you would do with this if only it fill in the blank because um, mm -hmm. up to this point we've, we've sort of been working from well if we were a post frame builder this is what we would want but we're not post frame builders so we want this we want we'd like you guys to 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 find and, and let us know what are all the uh, all the things that uh, that need to be addressed here to make this something that's going to make your lives easier when you're designing buildings for customers. I just remembered one thing that I did not show here that are these stud frame tokens. Maybe I'll just show those real quick. So we looked at those packages that I set up. And so down here at the bottom of my list is the stud counts. And if I do turn this on and I, I told it to put it in the accessories here. So now when I click that, it's going to give me these counts, triple studs. So there's just that one door. So there's a couple studs up above that walk door. There's just one wall, so two end studs. Um, I do have double king studs on each. So four, uh, 12 total pre cut studs or full height studs total number of studs oh and i guess this was my uh kings and trimmers which makes sense so i have one of each on each side of the opening 
So that's where those packages came in. Um, but you, you know, you can use these within any sort of calculations to calculate other materials. This was just an example that came in here. Forgot about that. All right, anything else? No other questions on this end from the chat group. Okay. All right, well, we are working on another release as we speak. Uh, we will do this again in trying to do two weeks. I think we ended up at three weeks this time, but uh, we will do another one of these. We'll have some new features. Um, I had a couple things coming up. We are going to give you the ability to define where these corner posts go, whether they're part of the sidewall or part of the gable wall. Right now, they're just part of the sidewall, the E wall. So we're going to give an option where you can change that up. Um, we're going to work on a solution to make sure that your heel height matches with the truss that actually gets pulled out of your catalog. You can get into situations to where, you know, the program will call out a truss with a different heel height than what you have set up in your model. So we're going to kind of close that loophole to just make sure that the truss and the heel height always match up to make sure that the panel lengths are going to be correct. Um, yeah, and then there'll be some other stuff. We'll be working on this issue where we weren't able to have the dialogue come up. You may run into that. You notice I hit save and then back home and then came back in, but we'll, we might do a hot patch to fix that up. So we'll have another release. We'll have another one of these webinars coming up. Uh, appreciate your time. Keep your feedback coming in, and we're just going to keep keep working on it. So really appreciate your time and for working with Smart Build. And I guess if there's nothing else, we'll talk to you next time. So thanks, everybody. Have a good day.